Race bikes are a funny breed, often revered to as the top end of the scale when it comes to bikes, regardless of discipline. Whether it's finely tuned downhill bikes or super lightweight XC racers like this, where a riding position has been dialed in for years. Are these bikes practical though, as your daily run around or the only bike that you might have? Surely there's got to be some compromises somewhere. I mean, all that fine tuning, all that setup to be specific for racing, well, can they go for the distance? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to go for a big old ride and use only this bike all day and see how it goes. I'm not just gonna go for any kind of ride though. I am gonna throw everything I can at this bike and see what sticks. I'm gonna cover important areas like maintenance, practicality, and most importantly, shreddability, because we all love to shred. Whew, so let's go. Right, shred time. Before I do get too carried away though, what do I mean by race bike? Well, race bikes are generally bikes that have been tuned or adapted for the specific purpose of racing on. And for a lot of us are derived from a normal bike, should we say, to start out with. Although you can, of course, buy bikes ready to race off the shelf, very similar to this one. If you are a keen rider or racer, you may have already taken the time to spec out and mod your bike to make it more burlier, lighter, stronger, and just adapt it to the discipline that sort of most suits you. But because of this, it could have not left you with many pennies to maybe have a second bike for not racing on or a general run around, unfortunately, because it can all add up. Are race bikes comfy then? Well, yes they are, but they're comfy within their purpose. So for example, a downhill bike will fit you great and work amazing when pointing down. An XC bike on the other hand, well they are designed around weight, performance, power transfer, all those kind of things, and they're good for XC racing up and downhill. And then you've got your enduro bikes, so they're gonna sit somewhere in the middle. They're not gonna excel at either end, but they're gonna do both pretty blooming well. I've been out for a few hours now on this bike and I do a lot of training on XC bikes as well. They're great for it. They tick all those boxes previously described, but they can become harsh and uncomfortable after a little while, just XC bikes in general, due to the position it puts you in. Not only that, bikes like this, well, they generally only have 100 mm travel, give or take front and rear. So when the going gets wild, well, it can be a pretty wild ride as well. And in the interest of balance, if we talk about a downhill bike, well, you could ride that downhill tracks all day long if you're on a shuttle, but try putting the miles in and well, that is gonna kill your knees and back. Enduro bikes sit nicely in the middle. They'll winch you to the top and they'll blast back down. You'll have a whale of a time, but they're not gonna excel at either one as much as the bikes specifically designed for that purpose are gonna be. A race enduro bike is a jack of all trades, if you like, it can do it all but it doesn't excel specifically at one. It excels, if you like, at enduro style racing. Parts and bikes designed and engineered around racing are usually super lightweight or really tough and durable. And therefore the maintenance can be either very minimal or something that you have to keep on top of quite a bit just to make sure everything's running as perfectly and as well as it can be. Take this bike for example, obviously it is a super lightweight full sus bike. This weighs just over 10 kilos, but there is everything from carbon bits and bobs here and there, titanium, you name it, everything that can be done to save weight is done here. But a good example, these brakes, really lightweight, small rotors on it, but because they're sort of so lightweight, so shaved out and they're minimal, if it were to take a big rock strike, well, it wouldn't take much to put them out of place. And the same can be said for other things like the wheels, the mech, you know, even the really lightweight pedals. These are all designed for XC racing. So strength is sometimes compromised in this area, whereas a downhill pedal, it's all about that durability, that burliness. So this same pedal will have a nice big cage around it to protect it. So 
you know, if it takes a rock strike, it is gonna be a lot more lasting. If this was my only bike, then the wear and tear would be significantly increased on it. Using it as a daily run around would not be the best thing for it. So replacing these kinds of expensive parts, well, that is quickly going to empty your wallet and probably a motivation to use such expensive parts sometimes, even though they are so good for racing. So unfortunately, from a practicality and a maintenance kind of specialty view, can a race bike be your only bike? Ideally not. I mean, it can, but ideally not. Oh, lordy lord. I tell you what, this is where the race bike is coming into its own. The super lightweight is definitely helping me oh, get up here. Yikes, I wouldn't be doing this on my downhill bike. Oh, an enduro race bike would definitely get up this hill as well, but it would be slower because, well, they're heavier. So, swings and roundabouts. But for right now, I'm glad I'm on my XC race bike because there's a lot more hill to go. The big one then, practicality. As mentioned, for a lot of people out there, having more than one bike is just not feasible. Bikes can be expensive, so having multiples ain't gonna happen. But you're a passionate racer, so what are you gonna do? Having one bike means that you'll just have to accept the fact that sometimes it won't be quite as good at some things than it is at others. But don't let that dishearten you, as you can still razz it around. Just make the most of where it excels and don't let it worry you where it doesn't. I'd argue that race bikes aren't the most practical a lot of the time, but they sure are a heck of a lot of fun. Are you gonna be able to pop to the shops on them? Mm, unlikely, as you'll be terrified of leaving it outside. A lot of bikes are built for a specific purpose. Downhill bikes for going down. XC bikes, well, they go up and down, but very fast and efficiently. Jump bikes, yep, you guessed it, they hit jumps very well. That's what they're made for. All of these bikes are great at what their specific purpose and design is. However, do these cross disciplines? Can you do one thing designed for downhill on something that's not? Or vice versa? Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, we're towards the end of the ride. I've been out all day and I thought, yes, We'll end with something spicy, something you guys will want to see. So can this 10 kilo XC bike get down this exceedingly rocky downhill track? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's go hit it. Is it wise to do it on this bike? Oh, hell no. Is it fun? Yes. But we said we'd see what it would take. Oh, dang. Oh, my wheels, oh, my tires, oh, my body. <laughs> Oh, 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 wow. I mean, I would not. Oh, there were some funky noises coming out. I wouldn't like to be doing that kind of riding on this kind of bike too much because the flex, the wear and tear, you can hear sometimes the rims just dinging. I mean, that's where an enduro bike come in, comes into its own, but then the ride back up, well, then you're stuck. It's quite a tough ride, isn't it? So. Can one bike, can that race bike really be the one? I don't know. Jury's still out. We'll have to, we need to ride more rocks, I think. Let's get even rockier. All right, a little high. Try and stay high. Nope, that's the middle. Oh. And we're unclipped. Okay, blooming heck, I'm glad that's over. That was a wild ride, but really fun. Now, so does the question remain, can a race bike be your only bike? Is it practical to have just the one bike? Well, I'd argue possibly not because, well, they're pretty flimsy. They're designed for a specific thing. But if you've only got one bike, then, well, yes, they are. 
So really that doesn't really clarify it too much, but hey ho, what can you say? Anyway, thank you very much for watching everyone. It's been a wild time. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will catch you next time. Happy riding and goodbye.